Hi guys, welcome back to RAS Weekends and today we are covering all of the cultural generic factions in RTR Imperium Serectum. But stop! Before you click away guys, this is a topic that is much more interesting than you think because it really does impact on the gameplay of mods in general and has done for quite some time. Mods have always tried to make rebels more active, aggressive, and produce stronger armies and of course build up their economies as well, but it's very hard to do that with a rebel faction. Old mods like Roma Serectum 2 and Rome Total Realism version 7 went a step further and they created a free people's faction that would serve as a more enhanced rebel faction that expanded, did diplomacy, traded, built up their nation, built units, etc. And basically create a much more active rebel faction than was ever seen before. The main problem with this is, in original Rome Total War, in vanilla, there were only 21 factions. So this can sacrifice one of the playable factions, unfortunately, for this feature. But nonetheless, it was a fantastic idea. And a lot of credit must go to DVK901, who came up with the idea originally for Roma Serectum. And before we move on, guys, if you do enjoy this video, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated. A big thanks to Ahowl for getting all of this information ready for me for this video to give to you guys. But along with the Free Peoples faction, there's also another feature in Barbarian Invasion called the Loyalty feature that has Shadow Factions. So Shadow Factions are a concept that make it so that every single city that will have a revolt will revolt to the Shadow Factions. So for example, if you Conquest Island as the Romans and it revolts after the Conquest, it will then revolt to a Roman rebel faction rather than Ireland, which of course is a little bit immersion breaking, isn't it guys? So of course this system doesn't really bring the right immersion results for what RTR Imperium Serectum wanted to do. But thank God for Feral and Rome Remastered unlocking pretty much all of the features that can be allowed for Rome Remastered in terms of modding they now have things called spawn scripts which allow modders to control how when and where factions can spawn so they don't need the shadow factions or the loyalty feature anymore and now of course with the massive amount of factions allowed within the mod i think it's up to about 250 something like that before the engine decides that it can't take it anymore um it allows the modders to mod in multiple free people factions and of course RTR Imperium Serectum like you've seen before has decided to make these factions based off the cultures on the map or shall we say the actual game mechanic is the religions isn't it but it is the cultures of the people on the map and thus they are named the cultural generics. The ones that are in there so far and getting a remake and a makeover for this patch are the Anatolians, then the Thracians, and the Greek city-states, which I'm sure many of you have already played with and interacted with in the previous versions of the mod. But now there are three new ones. Of course, the Illyrians that we have already seen in quite a few videos, guys, for the Illyrian factions, the Hellenistic rebels for Hellenistic factions, and Egypt as well for Egyptian Ptolemies. These factions will appear on revolts instead of rebels. Rebels will only appear if they are revolting from a cultural generic in those regions that have been remastered, guys. Remember, these cultural generics are just in the regions that have been remastered. So this isn't going to happen in Gaul or Iberia, but in Anatolia, in Illyria, in Thrace, in Greece, and in the Hellenistic areas such as the Seleucids and the Ptolemies, you're going to get Hellenistic rebels or maybe the Egyptians in some of Egypt too. 
But this adds a lot of purpose and intrigue into the game because these factions are more than just rebels like the free peoples. They are actual factions that you can interact with on the map that will, of course, build up the nation, build units very much like the free peoples faction from those old original mods. But now there's many based on the cultures. And we can pretty much draw the lines of where these factions are going to revolt based on the cultures of the settlements they may revolt from. So the Hellenistic rebels, for example, will come from Hellenistic factions. That is the Antigonids, Seleucids, Ptolemies, Epirus, Bactria, Bosporans, Pergamon and Kyrene. Whereas the Greek city-states will come from Greek regions such as the Aetolians, Athens, etc. The Illyrians from Illyrian regions apart from the Dardanians. Um, Egypt from Ptolemaic Egypt. Thracians from the Thracian factions of the Thracian settlements and the Anatolians from Anatolian culture settlements such as places like Selge, such as places like Paphlagonia, that sort of thing. There are a few exceptions to this, guys, but those are very limited in terms of that. One example is Ecbatana, which by the time of the mod was so Hellenized that even though it is Median culture, it will go to the Hellenistic rebels rather than a Median culture rebel. But hang about, guys. There's now one fantastic feature that adds to this in such a great way. So the team has started developing a homeland revolt feature. And all factions in the game are going to have traditional homelands. Some are large and expansive like the Seleucids based on their historical homelands. Others are pretty much just the capital or only their starting settlements. But homelands can be dotted around as well like the Ptolemies will have a few homelands dotted around based on which cities were Greek and Macedonian colonies over which were Egyptians, etc. To represent, of course, their colonization of these regions. So these factions have these cool new homelands. In the faction's homelands, guys, if you take a faction settlement that is part of its homeland and it revolts, it will go back to the original faction as long as the original faction survives. So rather than them going to the cultural generics in the case of the homelands, they're gonna go to the original faction. So if you get a few bits of land taken off you and they revolt, they might even come back to you, of course, which is really good. So basically the hierarchy is if you can't control another faction's homeland, it's gonna go back to them. If they then can't control it, it will go to a cultural generic. And if the cultural generic can't hold it, it will go to rebels. I don't think it's going to go all the way cascading down that line very often, guys. Um, but that is basically the hierarchy. And then settlements that aren't homelands for anyone that are in the remastered areas are going to go to the cultural generics. In terms of the gameplay of this, what does this add to the game? Well, we've already talked about the fact that it is the factions being able to build up and be interactive, be an actual faction on the map representing the peoples of these cities and tribes rather than just a rebel that doesn't do anything, never goes out of the city, never recruits units, never builds up the city. So it's very, very useful for gameplay because how many times have you come to a rebel city 150 turns into the game and it's still a town? Like, <laughs> it is always very annoying when that happens, to me at least, to me at least, because I'm like, how did you not upgrade this? But if it's in the hands of a cultural generic, they're actually going to try and upgrade it. They're going to try and build it. They're going to try and build an army around it, etc. This also gives a few other benefits to the gameplay, such as the fact that it makes it harder to blitz. And if you blitz, you can potentially give back factions their homeland settlements if you aren't careful. So if they, you, you, know, you blitz really quickly, don't garrison properly, don't sort out the public order, those settlements, if they're homeland of the faction you've taken it off, will go back to that faction once they rebel, making you weaker in the process. So, gonna make uh, public order a really important part of your expansion in these remastered areas. 
It also means that if you have an alliance with the cultural generics, that could be ruined if they revolt from you in a city that has really bad unrest. So you want to keep a hold on all the unrest across your nation as well, in case any cultural generics might pop out of you. All in all, this of course makes it much more interesting and much more dynamic for the gameplay when cultural generics have more of a stage so there's more factions doing stuff rather than rebels just existing and doing nothing. So rebels are going to play a lesser role. Of course, when all the other cultures are done, there's going to be a lot more of these and this is going to be a feature added to and changed across time. But like I say, they're just for the remastered areas at the moment. One thing you might notice guys are these little cities on the very bottom right hand corner of the map and these keep all of these cultural generic factions alive forever with an immortal character and no population growth and ultimate happiness too. These factions cannot be defeated and anyone who wants to take these cities should be mindful that it may cause CTDs because they are not meant to be taken guys so... Don't worry about those settlements, they are there just to keep the factions alive because once a faction dies guys, this is a key part of the mechanics of it, it is not possible to bring them back. So if you didn't have these cities and you killed the Greek city-states, all of the areas that would revolt to the Greek city-states would then just revolt to rebels. So it's a way of keeping the map alive and dynamic uh, because I know a lot of you will be commenting, oh can, you, uh, can they revolt? back once the factions died unfortunately that is not possible in the engine and getting to the final couple of notes guys the team decided to spread these cultural generics out based on historical sources to represent factions that were either too small or not worth representing for example like the autoriati in illyria although they were a very big tribe um, a lot earlier than the start of the mod by the start of the mod they have been so destroyed by warfare that they were really not an, an influence ever again in Illyria. That's why they're not a faction in the game, but they are then a cultural generic city for the cultural generic Illyrians. The mod team really did go to great lengths to find the most important areas for these to put the cultural generics. There are still rebel settlements around these areas as well just to give some gameplay incentives. If you notice like vanilla for example, vanilla Rome Total War, you always start whichever faction you start as with a nearby rebel settlement that's very easy to take. So that is to in, you know uh, impress on the player go and take this and it's the same in rtr as well there's a lot of factions out there that have some nearby rebel settlements that you can go and take to start with if you don't want to declare war on anyone else so they are still there but the cultural generics also do represent those other cities and tribes that didn't manage to make it to becoming a faction in terms of their rosters guys these guys get aor units that are recruited from the nearby areas to represent the unique and individual states that are present in these places so it's not just a generic roster for each one they will get aor units in these places that they have and may get rebelled into to represent those unique states and tribes which i think is really really cool and if you watched the video yesterday on the Egyptians, guys, then you will know that the Egyptian revolt is a scripted event that can happen based on some parameters. But now the cultural generic Egyptians as well can spawn out from rebelling Ptolemaic lands that are Egyptian. Now, this could mean one or two things. This can mean that once you spawn in as the Egyptians, there may be more settlements that are Egyptian if you decide to play it from the Ptolemies at the start, or it can mean as the Ptolemies, you're gonna have more of a problem with rebels, even without the Egyptian revolt as well, with revolts, which of course is nicely historically accurate. In future, RAS is aiming to represent more and more historical revolts, uprisings, etc., using the cultural generics to give the players a much more immersive experience during the game and allow the gameplay to be much more dynamic and fluid. So to summarize guys, those old free people's factions are now split into many different factions that may revolt from certain areas if you let them revolt and then they will spring out based on the culture of the settlement that they revolt from. However, 
if you take a faction's homeland, that homeland can then revolt back to the faction that it originally came from. This is going to add a lot more diversity and dynamic gameplay to the map and generally just improve everything and i think they've added a lot into this in terms of the systems that they work with the homeland system before it was just they were just there and occasionally they'd revolt now you're gonna have to think about blitzing all that sort of thing so i'm getting slowed down again guys that's basically what happened ha what's happening right now i'm getting slowed down again so I think that concludes everything for today, guys. So thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure. I hope you had enjoyed this overview of these factions. Let me know any comments down below what you think this is going to add to the game in, in terms of dynamic gameplay, which I think it's going to add quite a lot into the game, especially with the Homeland system as well. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you do like and subscribe, guys. It does really help the channel out. Big thank you to David for being the channel member on the channel, guys. And remember, if you do want to support the channel, if you're feeling generous, you can support the channel from as little as $1, one pound, one euro as well. Obviously, only if you want to, of course. But thank you very much, guys. That is it for today, and I'll see you all again on the next video.